Hi, good day. This is Jason from Gardenscape Design. And today we are in Mamaral and the sun is beating on me. So if you see I'm sweating, don't, 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 um, don't take any offense. It is extremely hot down here. But we have some plants in there that love this kind of weather, this, this kind of sun. Because right now we are visiting a place that, that how should I put it? This is a place where artistry meets gardening. So take, take for instance, this wall here. This was all done by the artists in the family. The walls. They are parapet in design, like a castle. When, when, when we go further inside, you will see some other motifs on the walls. You will see pots with, with um, designs. You would, you would see an ongoing project within the yard on this episode of My Garden, My Home. Hi guys, garden is a natural reflector of one thoughts, the emotions. In your garden, it's where you're gonna be to relax, um, to entertain. And where we are today, we're gonna see a difference in terms of gardening. So I'm here with the homeowner because you're gonna see a lot of different things that you would not have seen in our previous videos. So the homeowner is gonna actually tell you what is his inspiration in terms of designing his place of comfort, his place of solace, Mr. Wiseman. Yeah, well, um, it's still like the um, castle here. Yeah. So instead of just plaster in a straight wall, like, uh, something like you wouldn't see every day, like the old English castle here, yeah. and a reindeer on each side here. Yeah. I like the design with regards to the steps going straight into. The door. It's welcoming here. It's extremely welcoming. Take a look at the agaves and the different bromeliads, the palms, these hardy tropical palms, that plants that you're going to see within this area. Let's take a walk. Bromeliads, bromeliads. Now, this is the home of bromeliads and agaves, but we're going to focus on a couple of bromeliads today. Green eyes. A favorite amongst a lot of um, collectors, even for people who have commercial bromeliads. This is a massive grower and it's full sun. It gets up to about 70 centimeters wide. And the spots are very enriching on the plant. Look how it actually lights up the plant. It's just like if the plant looking at you. The pavers in which I'm working on, guys, as I say, you're going to see different elements that you would have not seen before. Coming into the yard, initially I thought it was wood, but this is actually com concrete. This is a design created by the homeowner, and it has a wood finish. A wood finish. And I like this tower that he has built here, a lighthouse. This is part of his rain garden project. So basically, the water will be catch, caught from the sprout and it will trickle along into this area here. It must have an area, it must have a grade, it must have a grade in order for the water to trickle between, between the stones. I can imagine when it is actually deck off the both sides, how beautiful it would look with the bromeliads. I've always been watching this property and always been watching what Mr. Wiseman does in terms of his work, in terms of his pots and stuff, and I'm very glad to be here today. This wall, it's just like a huge tree. It's very rough. And he's going to tell us a bit more about his pots and about this particular effect in which he actually gets when, it, when he does his work. It's a total reflection of how he feels. So we have some nice bromeliads here. In this area, a couple of commercial bromeliads and a couple of collectors. This is a planter, a skull face, a skull face planter here. So you could put succulents, you could even stick a bromeliad because it has like a six inch 
diameter on top that you could use as a planter to put in a six inch bromeliads. And then we have multiple other bromeliads within this area. Look at this tree, it's a king sago. So remember with bromeliads, this is we are in central right now and it's very, very hot here. All it's windy, it's very, very hot. So you have the king sago that would create filtered light for these plants in this area. Another nice piece that a lot of people love. This is a 2020 piece from Michael Keel. This one is Ray's Black Knight. A 80 centimeter hybrid. So this one has some growing to do. It's only about 50 centimeters. So it has a little growing to do. Pitch Black, another favorite amongst the collectors. I see that they have a bigger pitch block on that side. We're going to get to that shortly. Mamarata. This is a Thai hybrid, I believe. A Thai hybrid. It looks something like broken heart. And we should be getting some of these in our upcoming Mother's Day shipment. Very nice form. Very nice variegation on this one. I must say. Again, guys, look at the pots. He has some double pots here that he created. So you can put two layers a different way to put your pot, your plants are the two different layers that you could actually use to put your plants. This here is another champ chantini form. Two layers as well. And of course, with this big pot in which he has the sago, the diameter of this pot is about 18 inch. So this is like an 18 inch pot and it's pretty deep. So you get a big nice plant coming out. And you just use the smaller plants to put the fillers within this area. Strawberry pot. The strawberry pot is a pot that you could use multiple plants in. So we are talking about bromeliads, you could use bigger bromeliads here. The bigger bromeliads could be used to shade the smaller bromeliads. The strawberry pot, why it's called strawberry pot? Usually the mother strawberry plant would be in this area and when it trickles down, the daughter plants would fill within these areas here. So it's just a matter just to fill this with wood chips and stuff. So I want the Mr. Wiseman, the artist behind all of this, just to tell us a bit about his inspiration in designing some of these pots. They look very natural. They look very wood like they actually look like wood. I have one personally that I purchased. I think I'm going to purchase the next one because I believe that they are very beautiful and it adds an extra element rather than the plastic, the terracotta pots that you would see. So Mr. Wiseman, you want to just tell us a bit about these pots, the inspiration behind these lovely pots that we've seen here. Yeah, well, my inspiration like for creating these pots is something like instead of the normal plastic pots or the concrete pot, create something you wouldn't see every day and something unusual them in a tree. I love container. it. And then can you get different colors from yeah, instead of this brown bar, can you get like a lighter brown or a different shade of brown? Yeah, any color you like if somebody choose to purchase is any color you desire. Well, you can get that color to suit. Yeah. Nice. I love it. inside album it just needs some more sun in order to get the purple popping out at the ends of this iron side this is a skotak please a classic plant and the variegation is very strong on this plant 50 centimeters is the max size this is 40 centimeters so it's almost reached the max size in terms of width but it could get a bit more full Fukria, another plant used for landscaping this is what they call a false agave, or this is another false agave. We're going to find out what is, uh, I mean, I always say about this false agave. We're going to find out exactly what is this false agave about. 
used to actually share these plants as well, put black. Two foot wide plant. So we have some small pieces here. Some small collector pieces and these are going to go to full potential once taken with taken care of with the right amount of love. We have Star Wars. 50 centimeter plant. This one has a lot of elbow in it. Usually the elbow would be a bit more thin on the sides. This one has a lot of elbow in it. Some people like this look. Some people may not. But this one has a lot of elbow in it. So it has a, a white kind of color in it. Lucifer. 60 centimeters Skotak. This is a very highly sought after Skotak plant. Very, very highly sought after. It creates a lovely rosette. And it could take quite a lot of sun as well. Shark attack. 80 centimeter plant. Big grow. Gets up to 80 centimeters. Remember we have been seeing shark attack surfacing in and out of gardens. That's a lovely one to grow. In terms of form and size. Bombshell. Ray Coolman. And this is lawn. Lawn did a 2018 piece called Luna Variegated. It has a very vibrant pink on it, pink, purple. This one gets to 50 centimeters wide. Backstabber. Very beautifully grown. Very beautifully grown plants. Although they are small, you see in the, f see in the form and you see in the love. A 2018 Skotak piece as well. Avenger Albo Michael Keel This one gets gigantic guys This one gets very gigantic Again you can see these shorter leaves And after the Application of fertilizer You see that it starts to get a wider rosette This one here is in Sun up to 12 o'clock A lot of black would come to the end of this leaf it's a very distinct plant in color when it actually takes full stride. It is one to indeed catch the eye. Jet setter. Another Skotak piece. This plant gets a lot of... Some, some of the jet setters, you would see circle banding going straight around the plant. Straight around the plant. This one is nice, but some of them you would see a lot of circle banding going straight around the plants. Matching each and every leaf when it comes out. This is a very beautiful plant. Roboto meniscals. I see Kim here. She loves her black and white. You have black ninja. Chantini de Leon. I don't know if these pops are for sale, guys. I'm not too sure. This is Roboto meniscal. But it's a... It has a black zombie effect as well too. What do you call it? <laughs> Zomberto. 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 Roboto Miniscal half. Black zombie half. Frappuccino. Some nice commercial plants. Frappuccino gets very big though. This one is beginning to pop. The inflorescence hasn't emerged as yet but it's beginning to pop. So it has a lot of potential on this plant here. Red Tiger. I can remember the days of Red Tiger. Back in 2019, this is a plant that used to talk quite a lot. The margins on this plant is very unique. And it has a, it could take full sun. It gets pretty, pretty wide, up to two feet wide. Fudge Ripple, Hoemburgia. Now, sometimes Hoemburgia has an upright growth pattern, tight rosette. But you'll notice on this Hoemburgia, it has a strap. So what this strap would actually do, it would keep the leaves close together so you can have that conical look. Ananas. Another variety of bromeliad, pineapple. Also terrestrial, but this is in a big pot. Terrestrial meaning that the could grow in the ground and it would be pretty much fine. Candy apple, another commercial. This is a full sun plant and it does well in landscaping. Guys, you all, especially for the new breeze, you all could go out and try and get some candy apple. 
Look how big this plant is. Two feet wide. You harness with all the variegation. Take me all on the others. This is boot. So you have a lot of different um, varieties in the Hollandiana. This one is um, boot here. Basic, basic landscaping, but very effective with your fillers around your main thriller. So you see in the Blanchetta uh, lime lemon here, as the fireballs right around it. Knockout. This plant is going to create good aesthetic appeal in sun or as focal points. Johannes de Rolf. This one hasn't taken full stride as yet. It's a full sun plant. It could get a little bit bleaching when it is you put them in the sun, but it's all about acclimatization. Knowing exactly how to acclimatize your plants for acclimatization, I would recommend two hours of sun every two weeks or so. So from eight to ten, you put the plant in uh, sun up to like eight to ten, right? For two weeks. Following two weeks, you put it up until twelve o'clock and so on. That's a good technique that I use to acclimatize plant. And within and with this hot weather, you could miss the plants. You could wet some of the medium so that the plant could absorb water through the roots in this fashion. Berry cherry. This plant is a full sun plant, I think. This is a full sun plant, a unique upright growth pattern for a new gilia. You probably might mistake it for acme at first glance because you know the acmeas have those upright leaf growth pattern, but this one is a new gilia, a full sun plant, and it's a very pretty plant as well. So next we're going on to the agave section. Okay, right now we are in the area with the agaves, and right now I'm here with Kimberly. And she was explaining to me earlier about the difference between true agaves and false agaves. So can you just go over that for the viewers, please? Hi, folks. So this is an example of a true agave, right? If I look closely, you see the tips here? It's very deadly to touch. I, all on the stripe, <laughs> they have a lot of tones to the ends, right? On every kind of true agave, this is what they all would basically see. So that is the standard. It's more dangerous. Okay. But, and this one is an example of a false agave. If you look closely, to the ends have no thorns. And here is, is it don't have any pickers. So it's not danger, as dangerous. And great for landscaping. Anyone depends on your preference. Very low maintenance. So these, these can be grown in very arid regions. Excellent for landscaping in, in general. Yo. Do you water water these often, by chance? Well, just water again. These few days were so hot we water them like every week. But normally they are very low maintenance and you can stay a few months in the ground itself without being watered. That is excellent. So for anyone who wants a plant that they do have to baby really and truly, this is the preferred plant. And they're very lovely. They have a lot of different colors, nice shapes. Look at look at this one for instance. It, it, it reminiscent of a, a rose when you take a top down camera when you take a top down look look at this kind of resembles a rose pattern shape very very lovely look at this um do you all do you all sell these by chance yeah but this is a far seller oh. what's it name agave salamania agave salamania we will we will put up details how you can Contact Kim for the sale of these beautiful agaves. Excellent plants. And I like how you have them landscaped here as well. Very nice. This one is a Joho. You will see this one, this one very common in gardens a lot. But there are some of these here I've never seen before. 
beautiful. Köszönöm, octopus, agave, octopus. Agave, octopus. Agave, That blue. is lovely. What's the name of this? Agave blue. Agave blue. Oh. And if you look close, the camera come up, come up here a bit closer. You would see that when it was in its infancy, all of the tones and markings got imprinted on this leaf from the opposite leaf. This is truly lovely. Truly, truly lovely. Okay, well, thank you very, very much for inviting us today in your home. No problem. Thank you. This is Jason from Gansky Designs. And thank you for viewing the final episode of this season of My Garden, My Home. Hey guys, Jason here again. This is agave tequila or tequilana agave. And you guessed it correctly. This is what they use as the base product for that famous drink from Mexico, tequila. Agaves have lots of different uses. I'm sure in the grocery store you would have seen agave syrup or agave sugar. That is also made from agave. That's a fun fact I thought I'd add in.